Hey, how's it going? This is Brando from Brandlix Media. As usual, we have a, a pretty quick video here. Um, and nothing, I, I in my school community, right, there's a lot of people that ask me about ad copies, about creatives, about a lot of different moving parts. And this made me think uh, about one simple thing. The number one component, maybe not number one, but the major component that actually allows us to get pretty consistent results with most of our clients is just being, being really, really, really extremely detailed oriented and organized. And you know, the benefit with being organized is that it, it, it not just makes your life a lot easier, right? Because everything is organized, but if it's organized, you can literally track all of your analytics in a, in a much easier way instead of just having everything scattered. And the reason why I'm mentioning this and I'm doing this video is because a lot of the people in my community I feel at least my perception is that everything is kind of is kind of scattered all over the place, right? Which is not good. And so what I want to do in this video is show you the exact process and system that we use to keep everything organized that allows us to get, you know, to scale. Now, I'm, I'm showing you this, you know, this uh, kind of random client result here uh, because this is a client that we're scaling as you can see over here. Let me refresh so you know this is real. Whatever, we're scaling, they're making 1.5K uh, a day in revenue and we're scaling them to like five, six, seven, we're probably end up doing $10,000. This is a pretty seasonal product. So the good thing about this client is that we end up scaling like seven to 10 times during the year, maybe like seven times during the year. And so every time we scale, um, it really uh, makes me think of how successful my team is at organizing things because when you scale, things are crazy. You test a lot more ad copies, a lot more creatives, a lot more UGC collaborations. And so if the system breaks, you pretty much can't scale because everything is just scattered all over the place and it just doesn't make sense, at least in my opinion, how I operate. So yeah, this is a very quick case study. I just wanna show you how we're structured internally to make these things happen. So let's take a look at our command center, okay? What you see here, maybe let me shrink myself a little bit. What you see here is something called the command center. And we literally track everything. So every client that we bring on board has their own command center, right? So this is an example, it's a quick demo, right? So literally every single client that we have has their own command center, their own daily report, their, their own ad copies sheet, visual sheet, UGC tracker, storyboard, content tracker, everything, okay? So why is this important? As I said, because it keeps everything extremely organized. Okay, so why do we have this daily report? I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh, why aren't you using Triple Whale or like these softwares? Like we do that. We look at the ad account, we look at Google Analytics, we look at Triple Whale, but we also have our own detailed uh, color-coded reporting, right? That tracks, of course, whatever, daily spend on Facebook, daily Google spend, Shopify net sales, Shopify sales, gross sales. Net MER, the MER is basically, I think, the most important uh, number in your business, which is the proportion between ad spend, uh, right, and revenue. So what, it's like the business ROAS. So this is like a 2.58x ROAS, right? Uh, this is a 3.08x ROAS, but it's the business ROAS. So for every single, single dollar that the business makes, or sorry, spends, it makes $3.08 back. So that's what the business ROAS means. And this is the, the only like true, 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 real number that we are 1000% confident is true because these reporting metrics can like kind of be uh, not essentially misleading, but they're not 100% accurate, right? So this is also why we go a step further and we create this for all of our clients. We color code everything. We color code CPMs so we know exactly when it's expensive to run ads or when it's cheaper, when it's green, right? So everything is color coded and we track the, the extra reason why we have, we have this extra sheet is because we track a lot of different things day by day, like daily ROAS, ROAS from the start, daily average or value and see how it shifts, average or value over the lifetime and see how it shifts, conversion rate daily, right? Click, there's also other metrics, there are like 20, 30 metrics, right? So uh, cart to purchase ratio, like all of these metrics, sure you can also technically have in the ad account, uh, but there's some things that you can do in the ad account that we just add over here and it makes everything more organized. And at the same time, we can color code everything that which makes it even more organized and really, really easy to spot trends. And at the end of the day, guys, 
it's also about trends. It's like it's understanding when you can scale, when you cannot. Sometimes we think we can do something, but the numbers tell us we actually can't. So we're very, very, uh, very extremely precise with how we, we take our decisions and make our decisions. It's based on data, not how we wake up in the morning, as I always say. So this is one thing. This is like the Bible of scaling, of making sure that you have the numbers right. You can't scale without numbers. The next thing that I want to show you is just ad copies. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but there's typically five different stages of awareness. And there's people are most aware, probably your, your customers. Uh, whoops, what did I do? Right, so there's people that are most aware, basically your customers. Uh, there's people that are product aware, right? They are aware of your product. They don't maybe, they're maybe not aware of the solution, but they're aware of the product. There are people that are solution aware, right? Problem aware over here, and then completely unaware. Okay, so sorry, this was product aware, not problem aware. Either way, there's five different stages, right? They're, they're fundamental, and we organize them, right? Based on, uh, uh, we organize copies and headlines and the structure of our, of our copies, just literally based on the level of awareness. And this keeps it very, very organized. And so what we do is that we write uh, the ad copy over here, uh, we give it an angle, is it a direct pitch, is it a GIF, a testimonial, so we know exactly what type of ad it is. And then, uh, you know, we sometimes we even link some images to have some references, but we keep everything extremely organized. And the reason why you see, you know, these, these, uh, uh, these colors here is just very simple. It's like something that we also have, we go back and forth with the client. Whenever we have new copies, we basically highlight them and in, uh, in yellow and then the client goes in here and, and approves them. And, and so this is also another way to, to track what is, has been delivered and then what has been tested. If they're blue, they've been tested. Now, keep in mind, this is not an actual, this is just like a fake demo, right? These are like random copies, but it's what it looks like at the end of the day. So what, how do we come up with, how do we know how to attract most aware clients, product aware prospects, solution aware people? We basically do a very in-depth research. I share this pro uh, this template in my community, but essentially what it is, it's like a market, a product, and an awareness research. So we, we take a look at the market, we analyze the product within the market, and then we analyze the different stages of awareness within, the, the, within a product that is within a market. So it's like very specific. And so once again, not, I'm not trying to go too much of a tangent here, but I'm just trying to help you to understand how we're structured. Uh, which is the point of this video. Um, and so we do this research, right? Age, gender, who, what, why, um, uh, fears, desires. We understand the market as much as possible. And then we have additional research over here. We ask some questions. Then we have a product research, uh, the initial product uh, main features, advantages. What are the issues with the product? How does it position itself against the competition? And this is what, where we also just pretty much like read the reviews. We, we do a bunch of research uh, on, on, uh, on just literally the product, okay? Then we come along and do the market awareness research. And this is where we study the different levels of awareness by Gene uh, Schwartz. If you don't know him, this, this guy's a genius of advertising and he invented pretty much the, the five stages of awareness. Most aware, product aware, solution aware, problem aware completely unaware, okay? So whatever we do is that we establish what the most aware is, we give it some characteristics, and then we come up with an average or customer and like some headlines ideas, right? Uh, so, you know, this average or customer, which is basically existing customers or, or people who are very familiar and faithful to your brand are gonna receive some headlines and some ad copies, right? Same thing with product to wear, same thing with solution aware and so on and so forth. And so what ends up happening is that once you have this complete research, ad copies become basically a piece of cake, not essentially a piece of cake, but very easy to structure and analyze and, and kind of think through. So we also do this research, not just to understand the level of awareness for ad copies, but the well, level of awareness are also uh, important for visuals. And so we do the same thing for visuals right after the research, we do the research, and then it, it helps us come up with ideas for videos and images. And like how we like to keep it organized here is very, very simple. We have th the same structure to be approved, approved and not tested and tested. Um, and essentially, 
uh, these are the approved ones, right? These are the ones that need to be approved. And then we share the link over here. So everything is organized in this command center, but we also have like back and drive folders so that it, you know, we don't just rely on the command center. We have uh, um, a backend kind of like folder to give you everything organized. And here we receive feedback, we write just general feedback. And the same thing is for, is for images, right? Same exact thing for images. You can just click here and it, it brings you to the folder, okay? So this is how we're organized with visuals. And you know, the goal here is to have as many visuals and, and videos uh, and pictures and carousels and UGC videos, whatever approved, while at the same time having as many ad copies approved, right? Because if we have so many ad copies and so many visuals, guess what you can do? You can mix and match uh, as many variations as possible. And this is where you basically have a snowball, it becomes a snowball effect. As you go on, you basically have like 25 ad copies approved, 25 videos or visuals approved, and then you can mix and match and, and, and create your own split test. It doesn't make sense to like do one ad at a time. So let's say, okay, I wanna publish five ads. So I'm gonna write, um, you know, the ad copy uh, for ad one and then create the visual for ad one and then the headline for ad one. It does not make sense. We just do everything at the same time and we go for volume and then we refine the quality and decide what to mix and match, as I said before. Now, in terms of, you know, one other thing that allows us really to scale and, and, and pretty much have um, a, a strong trajectory that goes up in revenue over, over months is having a very strong UGC foundation. As I explained in my videos, if you don't have a UGC foundation, it's, it's pretty much hard to scale in today's generation, especially in, in 2024 and moving forward. UGC is just a really, really hot topic, something people wanna see, and it just works. And so what we do is that we have a UGC tracker over here, and this is essentially just like a sales pipeline. It's like, imagine having a sales pipeline right? But for UGC people. So what ends up happening if you don't have a sales pipeline? You essentially don't have leads. And if you don't have leads, you don't have any sales. Same thing with UGC creators. If you don't have a UGC pipeline, eventually it's going to dry up and you're going to end up not having any good content. And then if you don't have any good content, you can't really scale paid ads because you can't scale paid ads without content, right? So what we do here is that we add people, we go in our UGC base, we have this huge Excuse me, we have this huge database of content creators in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, uh, US, Canada, Asia, everywhere. We choose and pick and choose who we wanna work with based on their previous work uh, and their pricing or profiles or whatever. And so what we do is that we put them over here. We tell the client or ourselves, right? This is, it doesn't have to be for a client, it can be for yourself as well, whether we contact them or not, right? Very simple process to do that. We contact them by email. It's just very, very easy and straightforward. And then this is where we approve the collaboration and say, okay, I want to work with Brando, with James, Breeze, Jennifer, and Bob, whatever. And so whenever we decide that these are the people we want to work with, then we just share the addresses. Oh, I probably shouldn't, <laughs> I probably shouldn't uh, show the addresses of these people. Um, but yeah, so like these are uh, the addresses and uh, and we share them over here and then what happens is that it's very simple work approved by the client cool they pay and then we receive the final work and they just we just put them over here okay very very simple and streamlined process what ends up happening after three six twelve months is that this is going to be an entire there's going to be a huge database of content creators and i always like to say you start winning with ads when you have like an army of trusted content creators that produce and push content every single week so that you basically have always a surplus of things that you can test and you beat your competition from a creative perspective, okay? And if you beat people from a creative perspective, you, you beat them overall because we're in the attention era, we're in the creative era, we're not in the media buying era, okay? So important thing to remember. Same thing with storyboards, we like to keep it very, very simple. We have a storyboard sheet over here and essentially we have, you know, the hooks, uh, these are, this is like one storyboard. This is another storyboard, another storyboard, another storyboard. We have basically infinite storyboards here. These are just some random storyboards scattered. They're typically a lot more organized. So my apology here, but essentially what we do here is that we send these storyboards to our UGC content creators. Okay. We literally just copy and paste this framework and we send it to them. And we also give them a little more context about the product, of course. 
so they know exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it, what, uh, what features to mention in the video. We essentially give them a, it's not really a script, more like a framework that they follow. And that's how they produce the UGC videos. And once again, once they're done, they, they end up being over here. One important thing, just as a side note, remember to always receive the raw videos from the UGC uh, people. Not only the edited ones, because they will also send you edited videos, but just purely the raw ones. Okay, so anyways, this is essentially it. It's, it's a quick video. This is how we scale. Um, the reason why I showed you the quick case study at the beginning is because it just made me think like every time we scale, we essentially, uh, we essentially challenge our systems and processes. We challenge our SOPs, right? And they don't break. And if they don't break, like in my scenario, they actually just don't break because they're very systematized. They're very simple at the same time. And, uh, and we use sheets and it's working well. We're, we're thinking of moving maybe to Notion just because it looks better. But honestly, like you can do this on sheets. It works very, Google Sheets, it works very well. It's very systematized. Once again, we track every single number. All of, many uh, of these numbers, by the way, are also just like, uh, yeah, see like formulas. So like, I would say like, I'm not sure here exactly, but a big percentage of these numbers, like 50, 60% or, or 70% are all like, actual you know formulas and the other half is basically or like 30 percent is like numbers maybe from the ad account or from shopify you can also add you know add ext extensions here that can like get your facebook or google numbers and drag them over here so that you can do a further analysis and also these are automatic we set rules and the color coding happens okay that is it for this video guys uh, i hopefully gave you some inspiration on how to structure your backend how to be organized it's a very simple video, uh, but I just wanted to be transparent on how to actually scale and and while have sustaining and 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 uh, and keeping thing or things organized on the back end because there's nothing worse. I've done it six years ago when I started. Whatever, I scaled my clients. Right, everything was a mess on the back end. We couldn't we couldn't really handle or understand what copies worked, which didn't work, which one we tested. We didn't have this color coding. Uh, concept which is really really helpful honestly we didn't have the ugc tracker so it was a mess so we started implementing this and the moment we started doing this we also started seeing better results because we were just a lot more organized okay that's it for this video let me know if you have any other ideas for other other videos i'm always happy to share give it all to you and nothing that's it and hopefully uh see you in the next youtube video bye